this educated black woman deserves and expects to be respected. So I have a word to America today. Black women are sick and tired of being sick and tired. We see what you think about us, that you believe it is acceptable to sexualize and attack us, that you don't believe it's worthy of mentioning, but more importantly, of condemning. So it makes them mad when I speak from the perspective of an African American living an African American experience. What can I say? I live the experience of a black woman who is attacked and over sexualized. For the record, my name is Fonnie Willis. I am a highly educated woman with multiple degrees, and I am the district attorney for Fulton County, Georgia. And I am sick and tired. I am sick and tired of people using my name and turning it into something ugly, like a fanny. My name is Fanny, not Fanny. And they use the fact that I had sexual interludes with Mr. Nathan Wade as their excuse to abuse my name, to call me Fanny Pack Willis. And I'm sick and tired. And I'm telling you, America, this needs to change because I am Fanny Willis and I am a respectable woman. Hello friend and welcome to the Conservative Poet. My name is Amanya. Here on the channel, I do reactions, political commentary. I throw a little bit of humor in there, some skits, some parody to drive home what I call the hammer of what's happening in the society. I give it to you straight. And so if that is something that is interesting to you, then I would ask you to stay a while. Maybe you would like to subscribe. Maybe you would like to give a comment and we can banter it out in the comment section. Or maybe you can give it a thumbs up if you like it or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Either way, it works for me. But please engage because it helps this video to be circulated amongst the YouTube algorithm and that's going to help this get this video to whoever needs to see it and hear it. So thank you so much and God bless you. And I'm going to see you in this video right now. Friend, so I went on a live stream last night, Sunday night, and it was all about Nathan Wade, the bumblebee, literally the bumblebee, who's been out there buzzing in the streets. And he has been on a media tour running his mouth. And so I did my stream and I had a video on there from Marlon Wayne. And this morning I get up and YouTube says, we have blocked your video uh, because you used copyright written material. So they pulled the video. And so I went in and removed that Mar Marlon Wayne bit of it. And, um, and now I've put the video back up, but you're not going to see it at all. So I decided to make a whole new video because I am permitted to maybe put a picture of him over or a picture of the skit over my video. And therefore you'll be able to hear the audio. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to go back into Fonnie Willis's business and Nathan Wade's business. And we're going to re-react to this. So that way you can see my reaction to this video. And I will have it linked in the box so you can go and see the visuals for yourselves because he made some visuals, you know, about him on his back, like Fonnie Willis or him in the doggy style position like Fonnie Willis as Nathan Wade slapped that bottom. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. You ready? Let's do it. I don't know when Fonnie Fanny Pack Willis is going to ever learn that God don't like ugly and you really should not be in his church, but she goes back 
time after time after time after time to spew, spew her nonsense. And so she recently went back to church to spew more nonsense. And uh, she was talking about how she has been over-sexualized, how her name, the Fonny Willis, the Fanny Pack Willis name has been taking, you know, they, they're just disrespecting her and disrespecting her name. And so I'm going to play a short bit of that just so you get more context in reference to how she's saying she's being over-sexualized, but the very next day, the man who did the sexualizing with her is on a program where she is being defamed and being just, I mean, the jokes was on Fonny, right? The jokes was on her. So let's take a look at that. And then we're going to get into the skit with Marlon Wayans and uh, Nathan Wade. The bumbling bee. I've heard from friends of all religious backgrounds and all races, really disgusted that in God's house, ugliness against women is celebrated and not condemned. The remarks came less than 24 hours after Willis filed a motion to dismiss the appeal that is seeking to have her removed from the case. If the motion is denied, the Georgia Court of Appeals will hear arguments in October. Willis did not directly address the case, but did say she would continue to work toward what she calls her mission to make sure justice serves every member of the public. I have caused others so much fear by having the audacity to work towards my hope every day to make sure just Lady Justice works hard for, hear me on this, that Lady Justice works hard every day to serve all of her constituents. Former Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade sat in the back of the audience but did not make any remarks. And like Willis, he did not take questions after the speech. His romantic relationship with Willis led to the initial hearings, which resulted in him stepping down from the case. Now the proceedings are on hold until the Georgia Court of Appeals makes a final ruling on the appeal filed by Trump and his co-defendants. Kara Spelger, 11 Alive News. Seen that? Heard that? Good. So the performance you just saw there is allegedly Fannie Willis was called a hoe by Rudolph Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani. And so she took it to the pulpit of the church to address her grievances because, you know, she is not a hoe and she's being, she's being portrayed in the media as a hoe, as a woman who cannot keep her legs closed, a woman who is out here getting her coochie clapped all over the country. That's what she's being portrayed of as a hoe. But she is saying, I am not a hoe. I am a child of God. And how dare you call me out of my name because I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of being called out of my name because my name is Fanny and people want to call me Fanny. And so that was what her whole uh, setup was there. So, but I just take, I just find it interesting that the very next day, her lover, Nathan Wade, sits down with Marlon Wayans in this comedy skit where he over-sexualizes her, disrespects her, disrespects him as well, but he sat there and he laughed about it and he tried to push back and say, now, yeah, well, you know, some of it was not like that, but again, friend, he sat there and he took it as he made sexual jokes in reference to your fanny pack. Fanny pack Willis, the gift that keeps on giving. Well, what she gives many of us is migraines, but I have something to help ease your migraine and your stress. It is my new line of patriotic candles. Burn them in reference to Fonnie Willis so you could be relieved of some of your stress that this woman is bringing. So go to the orlandopatriot.com. They come in five different scents and you can pick yourself one up, pick one up for your friend and you all can burn your stress away, the stress that Fonnie Willis has caused you.
orlandopatriot.com on sale, 30% off. Oh, wonderful. I'm already stress-free. Here today, I got my man, Nathan Wade, looking smooth. <laughs> yeah. What was your first thought when you had the affair with Fonny? come public between you and her? I don't label it, uh, it an affair. Wifey or? D.A. Willis is a respectable mother, a, a brilliant legal mind. Right. Um, we spent countless hours preparing this case, investigating this case. I see y'all happen countless hours, and uh, I need a foot rub, and you, you know what I mean? She rub your foot, <laughs> nah, and you like, nah, here, nah. let me give you a massage, and all of a sudden, boom, boom, we up on this desk. Man. Willis? And Wade, Mr. Nathan Wade has come out to say previous that a work relationship, work romances, work love is as good as American apple pie. You know, it's just as good as pie. That Fannie Willis is as good as apple pie. But the question remains, uh, she's not your wife. And Marlon says it. He says, well, I don't label us as having an affair, but what else do you call it? That this is what it is. It's a love affair. It's a romantic affair. It's an affair because you were married. You had a wife. You crept out and you stepped out and you betrayed your wife. And so therefore, that's what it's called, an affair. And um, she wasn't your wife. Not the wifey. Not the wifey. Not at all. So Fonnie Willis has a brilliant mind. I would think in the midst of her brilliantness and her, you know, smartness that she would have, you know, put the, the, the old zip tie around her thighs and kept you out of that space. You know, she would have put on the zip tie and said, during those nights when, when, when the massage was happening, during those nights when he was, she was giving him those foot rubs, during those nights when the, the heat was rising, you know, when she was giving him those foot massages and then massaging the old one-eyed snake. Yeah. Her intelligence and the fact that she's a mother and the fact that she is a, you know, a person in the community in the position that she's in, not just the positions that you had her in, but the position of her job that she's in the community, you would think some of her intel, intel, intelligence would have kicked in, right? Some of that would have kicked in, but no, unfortunately it did not because her intelligence is not as intellectual as she would like to believe. She's not as intelligent as she would like to believe. And obviously we can see that you're not that intelligent either, right? No, not even close, not even close, not even close. Great, she liked it at you or you liked it at her? Well, that's a great question, right? So um, during the course of the investigation, we would meet early mornings, weekends, spend full days. Um, How can you not, not hit that? So How can right you not? Place. We spending that much time together. We doing everything. We might as well. Well, in terms of workplace romances, yeah. how many places have you worked? I probably worked like three or four places and everywhere I went, it was a mess. Well, you know. So she your boss? So <laughs> You on that indecent proposal no, shit? No. You on that Demi, Demi, what's that white girl name that married to the um, no. dude from uh, Die Hard? So that's a common misconception, <laughs> Disclosure. Right? Right? You on that disclosure shit? No. That's a common misconception. She's not my boss. She's never been my boss. You he wasn't he too Right. Right, she ain't he to you. No, I was a contract attorney. She was more analogous to a client to me. So you're saying she was a client? Yes. Right. So you, was, you served her well? I did. I did my job. And let's talk about some of the successes I did while I was I think we talked about the, job. the successes you no, did we, we, the job. No, we, we didn't. We're talking about uh, securing an indictment, talking about getting uh, uh, people to enter pleas. Right, enter pleas. Uh, <laughs> In a police. We're talking, gotta, we're, in a police. We're, we're talking about other jurisdictions even following. So they're spending a lot of time together, long mornings, long evenings, long afternoons. And so the fire started. 
but this is again this woman is in a position where you are the district attorney and everything is riding on this case everybody everything is riding on this case and so but instead of focusing on that she rather ride on nathan wade's hot dog so that's what she was riding him instead of doing what she needed to do for this case instead of them doing what they needed to do and so an indecent proposal is correct because here she is the woman in charge the woman of power if this was reverse if she if he was the woman the man in power um you know it might have been like a me too situation right but again because it's the woman who i assume is the aggressor in all of this i don't believe that he was he just doesn't seem to be the type to have done it she seemed like she's more the type to to say you know what i need that dingling i need your dingling and i'm gonna take your dingling and you ain't got nothing to say about it and he'd be like yes ma'am you can have my dingling you can have whatever you want you can have it whatever you like you can have it however you like you can have it anywhere you like and so she took his dingling indecent proposal indeed so he was definitely me too um from that perspective of again uh being the man in this relationship she was the powerhouse in this relationship and marlon reigns got it right that yeah i think he, you were me too she he too you is what he said you were he too that's it that's exactly right so let me ask you when old girl was like hey babe you want to be in charge of this prosecution of the president of the united states uh who did this insurrection did you think like uh this could get messy or you was like Nah, I'll be all right. We did not have that type of relationship right. um, at, at the at the outset, and we were interviewing other people uh -huh. for the position. What position was it? It was only it was the position of Which special position? prosecutor. Did that position look like this, <laughs> or did that position look like this? So no. After Wade resigned as special prosecutor, Trump's law dogs still try to use their relationship to get the case thrown out. They yeah, they didn't think that this could get messy because they were too busy thinking with their private parts, you know, his hot dog and her and her fire pit. Um, and so, or, or the American pie, <laughs> thinking of the American pie. But I mean, here you are, a black prosecutor and a black district attorney, all eyes on you because you are trying to make history by taking down a former president. And here you are, you've got so much on your hand. I mean, this is a loved president and a hated president and you've got the microscope on you. But in the middle of that, you still did not use your senses to say, you know what, this could get a little bit messy. We Maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Maybe we should hold this down. We could, you know, maybe I should step away or you should step away or you find another prosecutor or something so we can put different systems in place. Therefore, we don't, how do they say it? Interrupt democracy. So that way we don't throw democracy under the bus. But no, the fire rises and um, the heat is on. And so they had to quench their thirst of each other and have a good old bite of the good American pie, right? The good old apple American pie. It's a disgrace. Booking a cabin. I did lots of cabins. My question is, were you booking all these cabins? So, so, so. How many district attorneys you be smashing in cabins? Zero. Is it Airbnb or Verbo? Where you be getting all these cabins from? That's what my people want to know. Where do I get them? All right. All right, so some people saying this ordeal might have ruined the best chance to hold Trump accountable for trying to end democracy. Now, what would you say to all the haters out there who can't get laid? <laughs> Well, I, I don't know what the haters are thinking, um, but what I will say is under my 
leadership, we successfully secured um, a valid legal indictment. The charges so for as much as they were traveling all over the states, doing their 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 business, their work, you know, it's it's a valid point. How did you have time to be doing all of these cabin runs? Uh, these nooners driving this place, driving that place, dri and still was able to do work. You know, how, how is it that you were able to, to really put this case together, right? This is, this is a trumped up case. And so they didn't have too much to do, you know, because they were too busy getting the, they own work in, you know, as Marlon would say in this position or in that position, they were, they were too busy, um, doing those kinds of positions. And so no work was actually getting done except for the smashing. So I'm going to say it again. I am happy that this affair happened, that they have postponed this case and all of these good things that's happened um, because of this for President Trump. But when you look at it at a business standpoint and their whole setup of, you know, democracy, that this was definitely a L, a loss for them and their team because of them not being able to discipline themselves, control themselves, and they threw the democracy down the river. And that's exactly what's happened because of this. This case is not going to be heard before the election. We're happy about that. But you have to really think about it. The professionalism that um, has been tainted here, like these people have no credibility. They have nothing how do you even show up to do business somewhere? Because <laughs> when they, whenever somebody see you, they see you in the market, they see you in the, in the spaces. Oh, that's Nathan Wade. That's the one who took down democracy. That's Fonnie Willis. That's the one who took down democracy. Why? Because they couldn't keep their pants up. They couldn't keep, she couldn't keep her legs closed. And y'all took down democracy. <laughs> All right, young black man need a role model. What's your advice to kids in the hood that's out there that want to grow up and have their dick potentially in democracy? <laughs> that's some lethal shit you to ask me. We're talking, we're talking about... <laughs> Good. So that, friends, was from The Daily Show. Is it The Daily Show? The Daily Mail? I can't remember. But that was a skit. And I mean, for this man to go in and participate in this skit, and Marlon Wayans was, you know, playing a character, you know, a really hood up character. And he was, I mean, the jokes was just so disrespectful to Fonnie Willis. And um, and there he was. He was just a participant of really disrespecting the black queen. Nathan Wade, you participated in this ratchet um, skit disrespecting your black queen, your Fanny Willis, your Fanny Pack Willis. After she stood in the church the day before or, or a few days before and said how she was being sexualized. And here she is, here you are a participant in, again, participating in her sexualizing. You, you did it physically and now you're sitting here in this setup. I mean, I think for Fonnie Willis, that is really not just a slap on her fanny, but a slap in her face, a slap on her head and a slap on the other side of her fanny. And then you slap them both. That was a double slap on her fanny pack. <laughs> That was a double slap <laughs> because my God, man, do you have no kind of, you know, brain working up there? Like, why would you go and sit and do this? I mean, when she saw that, I'm sure she would have picked up something. If she had my candle, if she had my candle, she would have picked it up and threw it at the TV. Yeah. She would have done that. She would have, if she had it, she would have picked it up and threw it at the TV. Why? Because she would be hot. Not the heat that comes up from between her legs when she's in the heat for, for, for Nathan, but she would be hot as an angry, as an angry black woman being sexualized, right? She's being sexualized and her lover 
is a participant. <clears throat> Friend, we have come to the end of the show and I so appreciate you stopping in to see the conservative poet and what we are up to. So I am grateful for you. I thank you. And I want to say this right now, if you are interested, I do have a membership where you can become a part of the tribe where you can get videos and behind the scenes action of when I'm on the ground. As you know, I work campaign, so I'm currently working a campaign. So I'm always at events and things like that. So I bring you some of the back behind the scenes content of what I'm doing when I'm on the ground. So if that's something that interests you, we have that program. It is $4.99 a month. And it really does help me to continue to make the show what it is, to continue to make it better and do different things. I've got a lot that I'm planning. And if you can't do that, then you can definitely buy yourself a candle, which will help also uh, with what I'm doing here. So every bit help. And I'm really grateful for, for this opportunity. And I'm really grateful that I'm able to do this and um, bring you some of this great content. So thank you very much. God bless you. Oh my God. When I tell you all that smells good, this one is sage white sage and lavender and it is so smoothing and i'm just i'm in love with the scents so anyway grab yourself one grab a friend one and god bless you and keep you thank you again for your support really really appreciate it like share subscribe and i will see you in another video god bless you and god keep you until next time Ah, oh, relieving my funny stress. Oh, I'm already better. I'm already better. Make yourself better too.